Yo everybody, this is a response to DW Terminator's Redux review on World at War. I was a bit disappointed and confused about a lot of points in the review and I felt it wasn't thought out, especially in the terms of how multiplayer was attacked and almost everything he said about multiplayer was actually the opposite. So I gotta go in and explain a few things coming from an 8 year old World at War player and for all of those other current players out there. Now, the kill streaks. He says that the airstrikes from Call of Duty 4 and artillery strikes from World at War is the same thing. Now, the only thing is that is similar is that it takes time to get to an area, although artillery takes longer, and that it hits that same area. But the difference is the airstrike is over with quickly while the artillery strike lasts for longer amounts of time and if dropped around teammates will make the teammates get stunned and move extremely slow. So you don't want to do that. Artillery can be effective in some areas and greatly effective on some maps in general. You have some hits and have some misses but one thing that you have to get used to is that due to the arcade way Call of Duty is made Artillery can actually go through buildings with soft or weak rooftops. You won't see a visual indication of that because there's no destructibility and you'll think you're safe going inside of a building to get away. He says attack dogs don't get you many kills? If we're talking about a 40 plus player server which he was playing on, unless the other team has great top of the line players and yours has below average players in which you may not get that many kills anyway those dogs are gonna net you many kills and they are better than the helicopters on Call of Duty 4 at getting kills because they can go where helicopters can't that's why I love those dogs on World at War if you think dogs are pretty easy to take out ask the players why they call them juggernaut dogs <laughs> They are tough unless you're playing hardcore mode. And the announcers, they're excellent. Well, except for the German voice. Yeah, that's a weird one if you hear it in English. Other than that, they're some of the best announcers you'll find in any Call of Duty game. They may be amusing to some, but they definitely get the job done. They bring great motivation to the battles, including the battle chatter of the soldiers all around you which I talked about in the past World at War video. Now he says the maps don't flow very well and are more of a mess than anything. I'm a bit confused on that one. It seems like he's saying that maps are bad in general. Now, I don't know what direction he's coming from on this one but I'll say there's maps you'll like and there's maps you'll hate and that's with any game. If he talks about in terms of how many players on the maps well that can also affect you know that as you put that in perspective some maps aren't built for 40 plus players you take making day the map he was playing on and sure you will have some choke points on that map with lots of players because it wasn't meant for that in mind you may fare better on servers with a smaller player count there are a lot of players that like large servers so they like it like that Take the smallest maps, you know, take Dome for example. It gets a lot of hate, it gets a lot of love. But it's not the fault of the map that it wasn't made for 40 plus players. Lots of players love this map and they like it like Newtown or any other small map where you can rack up many kills. So it seems like he just doesn't like any of the maps. Well, I don't know what to say there. He says the gunplay is kind of a mess because they threw bolt action rifles into the mix and they don't fit very well when the MP40 is ridiculously overpowered as it is. And then he goes on to say in this footage you may not see that because people stopped using MP40 and it was so good that they got bored of it. <laughs> Are you serious man? Wait a minute we're wrong there bruh. Now those statements are contradicting. The MP40 isn't used often in general on World at War PC because it has slightly different stats than the console version. On consoles it's a strong weapon but people are usually using the Thompson instead of that on the PC. I won't fault them for not knowing that. 
Now the bolt action rifles are some of the guns World at War is actually known for. A lot of people are huge fans of the bolts, especially when playing on larger maps. Then there's the tanks. So he says the tanks are more of a liability than getting in one because you can get you can be easily destroyed. Now if you were destroyed while in a tank, then some players are doing something right because all I hear and read is people whining about tanks are too OP and how some people hate the tank maps. Those same people don't make an effort to destroy the tanks and most of those that speak out are just lazy. They don't make an anti-tank class for going into these tank maps and even if you just use two sticky grenades you'll be alright. Those do a good amount of damage to tanks. Frag grenades, they do zero damage. So you'll just be wasting your time with throwing those at tanks. Now if you drive into a thick enemy spawn with tanks and get blown up, well that failure is on you. You deserve that. Now there are only four maps out of 20 that has tanks. Only four. You wouldn't think it would be that big of a deal for some players. But yes, the tank is still useful. They just got you, brah. As for the overall opinion of multiplayer, I think it's amazing what Treyarch was able to do under pressure when having to switch over in mid-cycle to the Call of Duty 4 engine to finish the game. Due to the then recently enormous popularity of Call of Duty 4, they had to. It was definitely a buggy multiplayer on launch with Activision pushing the dev teams to get these games out in working condition before release date. However, World at War is one of the best Call of Duties ever made, and it stands out from a lot of other Call of Duties. I did play Call of Duty 3 on the console before totally just doing PC gaming. Now Call of Duty 3 gets dinged for supposedly being bad, but its multiplayer has things that should be carried over into a World War II game today if they made one. Now, I didn't play online multiplayer on consoles, and my first experience was on PC, but I did watch a few Call of Duty 3 multiplayer videos where they have the Jeeps and the passenger bikes as well as the tanks. They have a few other multiplayer features as well. They even had the famous, but hardly ever played, War Mode. The best mode in all of Call of Duty. Yes, War Mode from World at War and Momentum from Advanced Warfare all started in Call of Duty 3. To this day, people are still playing World at War multiplayer on the PC with the violent gore of limbs being torn off with the browning, tearing the bodies to shreds, and the roar of the battlefield raging on. Treyarch wasn't afraid to do something new, and when you look at it for its four player campaign co op, its addictive zombie mode with custom made maps, although I prefer actual zombie games like Dead Island, for example, but you know, and it's all around great multiplayer, which is addictive for me and for the rest of the crew. This is also the last World War II Call of Duty game. I don't know if anything is coming after that. I don't know if we'll go back, but for now, this is the last World War II Call of Duty game. Now, I have a feeling that DW Terminator just doesn't like Call of Duty World at War overall. I do agree with him on his statement about the brown and gray colors, because that's one thing I do dislike about the game is that yellow tint on some of the maps and the desaturation of the colors I hate that yeah they were trying to bring some vintage footage look over here but I would have been fine with the actual colors like the soldiers actually saw it back in the day instead of an old film look well that's the end of that and uh, DW Terminator put together a good video so check them out Although I disagree with many of his points, mainly in multiplayer, it's a well done video. I just had to bring it up from a point of view of the players that are still playing the game today at this very minute. So if you enjoyed the video, leave a thumbs up below and also share and subscribe because it helps us out a lot. We keep the game service going for all of you. This is PD Elite Gaming. 
Enjoy your day, and I'll see you on the servers. I holla. Alrighty.